Should we buy or sell Fathom Holdings? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. So here are a bunch of what I call real estate disruptors. So this is in the megatrends. And you can see that, you know, the average performance here is, you know, 35-ish percent away from the 52-week low. That's pretty good. Uh, but we are minus 61% away from the highs. Here is Fathom. Um, I just categorized them as, you know, servant uh, leadership. 73% uh, away from the low here. But minus 72% away from the 52-week highs. Here is, you know, their website, your home for real estate. Find your next place to call home. Yeah, uh, very nice uh, and uh, easy to use uh, website, which is obviously very, very important. So Fathom is a national technology driven real estate services platform integrating residential brokerages, mortgage, title insurance and software as a service offerings to brokerages and agents by leveraging its proprietary cloud-based software called Intelligent. IntelliAgent. Okay, very cumbersome sentence. But anyway, is uh, they are you know um, they do fit the, the description of being somewhat you know disruptive. So here is the long-term chart, you know, weekly data points, and uh, something I think you can see right here yourself is that this purple. 20 week moving average is loved by the bears. They come back there to short and you know, make uh, good money uh, doing that. Uh, you do see now that you know, Fathom has been up four weeks in a row. Uh, that is rare. Uh, you know, looking you know, historically, um, looking at you know, the daily data points, we have another you know, key moving average, and that is this blue. 100 day moving average resistance uh, in this case you know the bears were actually getting into some trouble but then they fought back you know um big here it was more of a surgical short yeah uh, here it did sort of function as a short but you know I, i'm pretty sure that some of the bears were a bit spooked here but eventually it worked out really well and guess what? We are back at that, uh, you know, super key moving average now. And we did see some sign of rejection. So I think that as long as, you know, the purple 20 week and uh, the blue 100 day moving average is in play, you know, from a bearish perspective in the sense that it is resistance, then, you know, there's no reason not to expect uh, the bears to short that uh, moving average. Looking here at you know these other indicators, we did get a MACD buy signal here though, um, and if we look, in, if we zoom in a bit here, you know during this rally, we didn't really get you know a MACD buy signal. This is a bit of a clear buy signal, um, so, so it's it's not like a roaring buy, especially given that we have been up four weeks in a row here, but it's a bit dangerous for the bears. Looking at you know the daily data points. That is when it becomes a bit more messy for the bulls again, because looking at, you know, MACD, RSI and the PPOs, we are at a level on RSI that triggered some previous, you know, good shorting opportunity for the bears. If you look at this move here as an example, it was the same RSI level and it was a very good time to short the stock here down to here, minus 24%. Uh, this time as well, the same RSI level that we have now. The bears who shorted it could have made, you know, 34%, and that is pretty good. Yeah, and when when we look here at accumulation distribution, uh, we don't have uh, it. It is not corroborating the move we are seeing here on price. Ideally, for the bulls, is is to see a move up in price simultaneously as you see a a, a new well a, a higher high on accumulation. So uh, we have 20 weekly moving average, 100 daily moving average, and RSI daily uh, resistance. Uh, so I give the technical here, here a minus 6. But you know that minus 6 is of course a function of these scores. 
these lines in the sand. If we were to see the bulls push above these resistance levels, then obviously, then they wouldn't be much uh, of a resistance level anymore. Okay, but let's look at seasonality. So, the, this stock, uh, you know, relatively recently came public, so we do not have any data here to the right. Uh, to the left, uh, we do have two years of data. Um, so, June is a 50-50 uh, month, uh, July is a very weak month, August is a very strong month. Uh, when we have so little data, um, then I, I simply cannot give any high number. So I will give um, this one uh, uh, to the bears, but only like a minus one. But if we had like, you know, 10 years of data, then, you know, it would be a higher score, but we just have to adjust it. Let's look at the fundamentals. So SAX has uh, a number four cell. C value, B growth, F momentum, industry rank, bottom 37%, and they categorize it as technology services. Market cap, 184 million US dollars, uh, no dividend, a very high beta at 2.51, so that is substantially a higher volatility. So, so basically, you know, the S&P 500, it has a beta of 1. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, the company summary, yeah, cloud-based real estate brokerage services. Uh, let's look at what the insiders are doing because they know a lot about the company. So we do see accumulation, buy, 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 buy. So that is interesting. Uh, so the most recent moves are accumulations. Uh, D means selling. Uh, so we did see a lot of selling uh, late into 2021. But it, it is good for the bulls to see that, you know, the most recent move is um, that they want to buy the shares. Uh, looking here at market screener and consensus estimates. So we only have two analysts here covering uh, the stock. Uh, average price target is 76% uh, above us. Highest is 90% above and the lowest is 61% above. Uh, so here you can see the latest ad adjustment, 2021 Roth Capital adjust uh, price target to $40 from $66.50. Yeah, and now it, it is at $10.53. So Saks, they did have a, a number for sell. And we did see that um, while the price targets are certainly, you know, to the upside, uh, we haven't seen any, uh, you know, new, uh, you know, price targets uh, for this year. And the latest move was a very substantial downgrade. So the most bullish thing I saw here was basically that, you know, recently uh, the insiders are accumulating. So I will give this one a two to the bulls, but I um, can't really go above that. So let's look at some correlations. Uh, long term, we get nothing. So we jump to the daily data points. And here we do get a 76% positive correlation with the S&P 500. We get, uh, interestingly, uh, only 59% with the VNQ, which is, you know, the real estate ETF. Uh, then we get 97% positive with the ARK K innovation ETF and then minus 80 yeah 85% here with uh, the 10 year yield so i expected you know the strongest correlation for you know a real estate stock to be with the real estate ETF but the S&P 500 has a stronger correlation and also um the ARK K so in this case it makes most sense to look at arc k the correlation is simply the strongest so here you can see arc k so this looks interesting okay this looks very mightily interesting so let me just draw this in this looks a lot like a double bottom what's even even better here is that the hypothetical 
right side of the double bottom is higher than the left. That is, uh, you know, uh, a better uh, double bottom. Um, so, you know, uh, there's obviously been a very, uh, you know, uh, protracted downtrend for this ETF. But this looks interesting. We are oversold on RSI, very low on the PPOs. Um, also here on the MACD, looking at uh, daily data points here. Uh, so we recently reclaimed uh, the purple 20 day moving average. Uh, and you see here that, you know, that moving average, if we go back here, you know, it was a ferocious, you know, short seller uh, level. They just absolutely loved to short that level. But uh, they have now lost that uh, key moving average. So, so that we are seeing some initial signs here that uh, bulls are coming back to ARC. Uh, we're looking here at accumulation distribution. It is corroborating this rally. So that is good. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. It's not like a roaring buy because there's been a lot of people who have... Um, gotten you know burnt uh, during this sell-off you know I have myself you know tried to you know find some lows um, been some tiny gains here and there but generally speaking you know it's pretty clear that uh, the bears have had uh, the final say uh, a lot of times now but at this point uh, this looks interesting from a more bullish perspective here is the relationship between fathom and arc k and we do see that, you know, for quite a few weeks now, Fathom has outperformed ARK K. Um, looking, you know, historically at, you know, these uh, two, we usually see some give and take. So a couple of weeks for Fathom, then ARK K outperforms a bit. So looking here at the RSI, we do see that historically, but we are, you know, at very high. Uh, we haven't been this high since back here in March of 2021. Yeah, so let's look a bit here at, you know, this, the seasonality. Um, yeah, so we don't get any data. I'm not uh, really shocked about that, but um, I just wanted to just show you so you are not like you know, suspecting that I'm hiding, you know, the seasonality data for this pair. But, you know, the reason we don't get uh, the calculation is simply because we don't have enough data for Fathom. So, um, so this, this one is a bit messy because, yes, Fathom has recently very substantially outperformed ARK K. So obviously we have an uptrend. But when we look here at, you know, the daily RSI here in this pair, we are extremely high. Uh, so yes, it is possible that Fathom is going to outperform even more, but the odds do not favor it. And when it comes to, you know, breakouts, and we do have something that looks like a breakout attempt, attempt now, it is much better to, to be a part of the attempted breakout uh, instead of the breakout itself. Uh, so the, the attempted breakout would be, you know, to buy, uh, let's see, around here, because then you would at this point have, you know, uh, yeah, approaching a 28% uh, move gain which would be a buffer for you you know that's the great thing about being a part a, a bit early is that uh, you already have some skin in the game and some gains that protect you but if you are going to just wait until you have the exact breakout attempt like here then you are at zero you know in your account it could go up or it could go down and uh, the reason why you don't have you know etfs that are you know based on uh, you know, uh, picking uh, uh, securities that are breaking out is because buying those don't work. You know, it's that simple. It's very easy to backtest uh, breakouts. And um, the reason why, you know, there's not a bunch of breakout algorithms and breakout hedge funds and stuff like that out there is because while you do have breakouts, if you make, you know, a list of 1000 securities uh, that are breaking out, very few of them will continue to make 52-week highs, you know, down the road. That's the issue. So, so the, the key thing is, you know, to pick the winners, and that is where it gets very complicated and very difficult. But it is much easier to pick uh, a security that is going to bounce or see a rally. That's a high-frequency event, 
even a, a terrible stock will occasionally have a rally from support. But only the elite will have breakouts, successful breakouts, that is, and continue to make 52-week highs. Here we have uh, ARK K versus the Nasdaq, yeah, you know, the QQQ. Yeah, um, yeah, we are, you know, at uh, new closing lows for this pair, um, so that is, you know, bearish. We are uh, very low on RSI, but we have been low for quite some time, so RSI has not been uh, tradable. Uh, well, it's not been uh, uh, profitably uh, tradable, because that is uh, what you want with any indicator. And that is why, you know, when I find uh, some security that is testing some key level, I will always, you know, go back and look at the history of that security and that indicator. Uh, and if we do see, you know, that in the past, you know, there's been um, uh, clear interaction, then it incre increases the probability that it actually is uh, tradable. But if you see, of course, the opposite, you know, then you basically just have a current interaction between price and an indicator, but it is mo it is most likely noise, and uh, you do not want to trade noise. So here is the seasonality uh, for ARK K and the Nasdaq, and over the last five years, ARK K tends to outperform the Nasdaq here, leading up into the twenty second of July. So I will give a whopping four. Uh, bulls on relative performance. So that so it, we do have some very interesting activity, especially here with ARK K, and there was a very strong correlation with Fathom. So the type of people that uh, trade uh, ARK K are very likely also the ones trading Fathom. Hmm. So this one is a bit messy because we do end up with a score of minus 0.3. So yes, the data is currently more favorable of bearish trades than bullish. The key lines in the sand is that we are at 20 weekly moving average, 100 daily moving average, and RSI resistance. So it's pretty clear uh, that um, the bears, they do have an edge as long as these are in play. But if we do get a breakout, that would be very good. One of the things you could do if you want to get very fancy is to do what's called a pairs trade. So that so that would be going long bullish arc K simultaneously as you go bearish fathom based on you know these resistance levels. So that is a fancy way to do it. A pairs trading is uh, uh, something uh, you know very few people have heard about. Uh, but I think you understand, you know, the, the basic uh, logic of a Pierce trade now. So, so, so that is something that uh, could be interesting here. But anyway, of course, whatever you do, uh, you want to use stops and um, definitely go to these channels uh, and subscribe here as well. Um, there is more activity on this than this, but I do think that this one here. Uh, it is it is technologically it is just superior. Uh, the reason why there's way more people uh, that like to go here is because there's more of an ecosystem on that platform. But that is where you will find the monthly reviews that I make of the trade ideas that I publish on social media.